that you've actually mentioned blondes a lot during yeah. your discussion. Um, during, the, during the course of our research on you and selecting you as a speaker, like we, we went through your blog and like you have a Facebook page and whatnot. Um, and we noticed that you know your DVD jacket, your website, your pictures like prominently feature a lot of Caucasian blondes. Yeah. And we were just wondering how you feel about the perception that you know, as like a person of like you know an Asian background or you know of a certain ethnicity having like Caucasian relationships as like a status symbol or anything, because you you kind of have mentioned that you know. <coughs> Kind of, yeah, and that's kind an, of that's going for the Caucasian blonde is like you know very yeah. like I um, don't agree. Yeah, that's completely in intentional. Um, <coughs> first, it's my preference. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> I do find I have more success with tall blonde beautiful women. I did. Um, <laughs> um, but that's I mean obviously predicated by like the the first girl I kissed, the first girl I was ever in love with was a tall pretty blonde. So blame it on her, I mean, partially. Um, secondly, there is, I feel, a large perception that Asian men um, or, or white women do not like Asian men. So there's, mm -hmm. intentionally, I do put that out there. I mean, I do encourage my students to to meet and flirt, seduce all types of women. But the, the, biggest, <laughs> uh, the biggest limiting belief is that Asian guys you know, cannot be successful with, with white women. And... <coughs> Obviously, that's that's not a blanket rule for for everyone, um, but it's definitely something I see because according to the U.S. Census, I want everyone to look, like look around to all the Asian girls here. Four out of the ten of these Asian girls will not marry an Asian guy. Okay, four out of ten, um, and two they'll they'll marry like outmarry whether it's white or whatever. All right, um, and two out of ten Asian men will outmarry. So you have two out of ten. One out of five. Are very, you know, you look around, one out of five Asians will not get married. That's uh, 660,000 Asian men, and that part of that is because... Will not get married at all. Um, yeah, so 660,000 Asian American men, because they don't, they're not matching the outmarriage rate of Asian women. All right, and that doesn't even include in 2020 the 24 million Chinese men who cannot get wives because of China's one-child policy. You're looking at a complete, massive over surplus of Asian men that has never happened in the entire world. Now you Asian girls are like, yeah, score. <laughs> you have your, your, your selection of anybody at that point. But I want everybody to think. I mean, if you're 18 right now, that's nine years from now when you're like 27. I mean, you're shit out of luck if you don't know how to date. I mean, <laughs> So yes, it's, it's completely intentional. I also say, um, you know, for it's intentional. Also, from a pickup artist point of view, in fact, that the girls that are on my blog, like the, the on my DVD jacket, that blonde is actually a pinup model that I actually picked up in real life. She's been on the Tyra Banks show, and then it was like I, I was talking to her afterwards, and it's like, oh yeah, I model. I'm like, oh cool. So we can do like a photo shoot. I can you know pay for the rights to these photos. And so, like the girls on my website and my um, my blog, are real girls that either I or someone you know from the ABCs has actually been successful with. So, yeah. um, I'm I'm interested in what you think about settling down, and like it seems to me that everything that you do is about just picking up the girl, and it's not really about who the girl is. But like, what advice do you give people for after that stage, like after they've met the girl or something? How does that work? Are you interested in settling down? I think. I, I, said, I mean, that might be in the cards for me, like five, whatever years down the road. I've had many students get get married, um, because everybody comes into this with both at a different place in their life and with different goals. Uh, I mean, I do encourage it. Like I said, I've had many students, you know, that have settled down. But again, part of it is here's, here's <laughs> the, the kind of like the, the unspoken secret about confidence. You know, you need confidence to get, you know, the girl. But how do you get confidence? It's like when you go, when you guys graduate, you got this resume, but you got no work experience, right? So you gotta like shoot it out to all these other companies and hope, like, one of them's gonna get that work experience. So, you know, to to meet that girl, um, to be confident, it does require that you have some sort of experience and confidence with women. 
the unspoken dirty secret is, you know, that confident, really handsome guy <coughs> that seems to be very suave and, you know, really rocks your world in bed has had, you know, probably quite a few women under his belt, all right? So I'm perfectly for it, you know, but at the same time, men do need to achieve a certain level of confidence with women in order to, you know, settle down. You got a question? Yeah, um, when you were talking before about the situation with, like, the four guys and the four girls and you. I mean, if I'm training, I mean, un unfortunately, I, I, more guys know me. I've been uh, approached by guys like off of the street in like middle of like Sydney, Australia at 2 a.m. in the morning who follow me into the hotel like, oh my God, you're Asian Playboy. Um, <laughs> but girls definitely don't know who I am. You know, a lot of guys do. So like, what do you, when you like throw the guy's arm over their shoulder, like, what are they <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, at that point, it's hopefully they're engaged in the conversation. Um, no, I mean, you have to realize that's the nice thing about the nightlife. There's a lot of things, because there's a lot of stimulation going on, a lot, a lot of different things that are going on. That me, like, throwing you know, an arm around a girl or, like, pushing them closer or you know, that kind of stuff. Is is lost in the influx of the, this constant information from you know stimulation from the club. I mean, I, if you think when you go out to the club and you're, you've got a few beers and you're dancing, are you really paying attention to everything that's going on? You know, a lot of these things are actually lost. Um, a lot of these things, you know, you don't pick up like the fact that you know that, that guy's buddy is like actually, dude, that's awesome that you talking to your dude. That's great. Right, so you're just having a good time. But the reality is, guys are going like, "Yeah, go talk to her, man." You know that kind of undercurrent of like bro talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it is. You know, maybe the guys don't want to tell you. You know, but you know, guys, you talk. So. Do you have do you have gay students, and if so, um, is slash how is like Drake No, I don't. <laughs> Yes, um, especially when we're in San Francisco. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we were just there, and um, based on simple appearance, got, that's the one. That's the one city where both the women will hit on me and the men will hit on me <laughs> in equal proportion. But generally, I geared towards um, educating heterosexual men. So. I mean, you know, one of these days we might open a, a course for women um, relationships. For right, right now, we're focused, um, as as you correctly pointed out the beginning phases of the initial meet and attraction and pickup.